Thanks for staying with us. Joining us now on the show is Her Royal Majesty, Queen Toby Phillips Ogunwusi. She's an honorary to the revered monarch of Ileife, Oni Adeyeyi Eniton Ogunwusi, Ojaja II. We're so excited to have her on the show. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Show her Royal Majesty. Thank you very much. You look very queenly. Regal. Very regal. Thank you. Good to have you on the show. Thank you. So today we're just going to be talking about different things, getting to know you better, because on this show, we're women, and we'd like to learn from each other's experiences. Mm -hmm. And um, when we hear of a queen like you, and we say we are a bit, we're a bit um, curious on how it is, how you started off, because I know you've been into the pageantry business for a long time. You've been a queen at different levels. Mm -hmm. You've been uh, um, a supermodel. You've won so many awards. Let me, let's start with your background. How did you start in Unilag? You went to Unilag. Um, how did you get into pageantry? And how did you emerge queen? Of, uh, how did you go to so many pageantries and became the winners? And, and how has that been before you became the real queen of <laughs> Ileife? Let's, let's, let's start from the beginning. How was that for you? Okay. In secondary school. Yeah, anywhere you want to start. I was just walking past the SS3 class. Okay. And one of the seniors just said, Phillips, come and show them how to catwalk. This was towards the end of the term. So they were planning to have Miss Foundation. The name of the school was First Foundation Comprehensive High School. So um, I then just came in and did my work. And she was like, you guys should learn from her, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and she was speaking to SS2 students. And I was in GSS3. Oh. So she, she then said, do I want to join them? I was like, yeah, but I have to ask my mom. So I got home, told my mom. My mom was like, hey, she better come change that one. Mm. All right, no problem. So she gave me okay. native outfits yeah. and then the mm. princess dress, you know, those things that children wear, mm. you know, the ball dresses and yeah. all that. So then I contested. And then they noticed that I tied my gilly myself. Wow, in GSS3? Yeah. <laughs> Every other children were running around looking for their auntie or their mommy to tie their <laughs> gilly for them. And I answered my questions confidently, right. and I won. So I went home with an entourage. So my father oh. was looking down the balcony and was like, ah. Pillow shelle. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to my daughter? Yeah, and it turns out that. Okay. I was miss of secondary school. So through SS123, they didn't choose any other queen. Then I was wow. head girl, whatever. Wow. Handed so over. You're smart too. Yeah, I'm book smart. Actually. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm book smart. Wow. If I want if I want to be. Right. So yeah. you're your queen, beauty, and then your <laughs> head girl and brains. So then let's take, take us from secondary school into university. Yeah, so I got into university that same year. And I usually would just parade the, uh, what's it called? Hostel. The dorm, the hostel, you know, like. I had a friend, God bless her soul. We would dance yeah. and catwalk nice. on the corridor oh. after class. Oh. So people were always like, ah, these two. But she was on the plum side, yes. and I was like skinny. Yes. So towards whole week, one of the ladies in my room said, I should contest for Miss MTH. That was the hostel, Madame Tinubu Hall, mm. in Lag. And I was like, hmm, should I? Yeah, I will. So then they propped me up, got me a dress, like a dinner gown, mm. a green dress. Then um, I took, called my mom for my native, right. sent it to me. Yeah. And all that. So you won that one, Sha, because yeah. we have plenty of questions for you. This is just, oh, yeah, just I won, and, and so, Helen Paul played a part in that. Ah. Yeah, because she gave me some pep talk prior, ah, to the, nice. prior to the contest, and she was like, don't worry, just be confident, just do your ah. thing, and ah. you're going to win. That's and then my late friend went to my faculty, called everybody, everybody to come and support, come you. support you. And you know, the loudest chair usually would get it, especially <laughs> if the person is smart. Yeah. So yeah. like, it was a no... Fantastic. Yeah, so then Let me I let the ladies come in here for a minute. Yeah, so um, I did a bit of pageantry myself. Oh. And there was an issue most models faced at the time, which was people would judge you uh, because you're into pageantry as doll before you even open your mouth. Did you get that kind of treatment? I still get that till date. Mm. But sometimes people end up, end up saying, you're so unassuming. Yeah. Mm. And mm. also because I know that people will judge you I took out time to improve myself on right. everything I wanted to know. Mm. <laughs> so that when you eventually meet me, you know that, okay, 
She's not all beauty. Yeah. She's much more than beauty. Yeah. I used to have this um, quote. In fact, I set it as an alarm mm. for some years. Be undeniably good. Oh, mm. undeniably That's good. Sweet. I like that. <laughs> so I had some a period of time in my life where I tried to hone my skills. Mm. I tried to improve myself on every aspect I thought mm. I needed. Right. Mm. Fantastic. I like that. So yeah. let, let's talk about post-university and, you know, work experience. Okay. You worked with the NIRS in Lagos. Yeah. How was that experience? And what skills would you say you I took gained. away from that, you know, into your present role as a lawyer? Okay. So I worked at LRS for about two years. I met different kind of people, you know. <laughs> I smile like it's bringing plenty of memories back. Yeah, it is actually. Tell us, some, tell us something interesting <laughs> about Eli Harris. Yeah, I met there. different kind of people. Right. And my then boss, she was nice to me. She just liked me. Mm. You know, but she's late now, Mrs. Disu. And, but at some point we had clashes because at first she thought I was just a doll. <laughs> yeah, dumb blonde. Yeah. yeah. But each time there was a task or to update some account or whatever. I just do yeah, my well. thing. And they're like surprised that I even submit my own reports <laughs> earlier before than rest. some people. Right. So. Okay, let's, let's get to the fun part. How did an a king spot you like this? As beautiful as you are. Bang, bang. That was his standing. Bang, bang. Yeah, <laughs> you see that? On you roof like that? Okay, you help us once I didn't ask you a question. How can you, you not spot you? Fine yes, girl how, like I mean, Wait, was it that you went to a club, you met him, or you went to a party, you met your, mm. somebody? I mean, I'm wondering, oh, how did he see fine girl like you? And oh, the kind of people you. he's been gathering, they are mm. very fine people, though. Mm. How did he find club. you? <laughs> <laughs> club. Like, I, I hadn't even been to a club in like seven, eight years. Okay. I'm just, that was just a joke. Yeah, like, but it's not my thing. How did you meet your husband? Mm. Series of events happened. And I think that year I was just praying, God, I want to get married. <laughs> yeah. And somebody just called me one day and said, Do you want to get married? I was like, What happened? No. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy said, uh, Would you like to get married to any of this? I was like, Huh? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, For real, for real. I was like, Don't joke. And then introduced me, and I didn't take it. Seriously. Seriously, Initially. because I was like, okay, so what is going on? Okay. But then we met and started dating, but there was like so many interference. Yeah. And we didn't get married. Aww. And that was quite devastating for me. Aww. So you did fall in love with him? Yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> nice. I won't be here today if hey, I did Hey, listen, we have, we have different ranges. I'm happy that you actually, there was a part where you guys actually dated and mm. fell in love. Because well, I mean, always yeah. promised myself that I will marry who I love. Mm -hmm. oh. So not take a look at me, I'm a fine girl. Absolutely. We can see that. So That's... like it's not like I didn't get people who say, yeah, marry me, marry me, marry me. But also there are some values I will want in who I want to be with. That's it. And he has that. So that's yeah. why I'm here. <laughs> I'm happy. See, that's such good to know. And I love and I love and I love that. Mm -hmm. Because people need to know that. There, there, it wasn't something that just happened. Mm. It was something, there was a process. And it's an interesting story. Mm -hmm. We're going to dig further a bit. Then we'll, get, we'll, we'll relax a bit and ask generally, because this auntie here has ah. been a pro proponent of polygamy. So we'll discuss that I when we come back. Stay with us. Ah. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we still have the queen with us, Queen Toby, with us. Um, we're talking, I was busy had a question for the break. Go ahead. Yes, so I'm curious how... Uh, polygamy plays out because I've been exploring the option that um, what if that is a sort of panacea to the problems of cheating we have these days <laughs> because I remember that back in the days polygamy was what African culture practice except you as a man decide to just stay with one wife but polygamy was rife and it was the culture and that saved us the heartbreak of uh, you know catching your husband here today going to break bottle with another woman tomorrow you knew that if he liked somebody he would bring the person home and you would approve so tell me how it plays out now that you fell in love with him how um, he shares the love in such a way that you are satisfied with the attention you get. Okay, first of all, being in this situation where there are other lorries, I understand that he's not going to have that time every day. You, yeah, know? you. 
and also is a busy man. Right. And also, I'm busy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from trying to get into the activities of being a queen, right. I'm someone who's never less busy. Right. So I'm not a, what do they call Clear it? Clear around. Not, not, not that word. The, mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> no, yeah, we can use that shot, yeah. but like, yeah. I'm not that type of person who would cling on to you mm. oh, every day. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not the gum gum, no, not the gum, -gum type of gum -gum. lover. Look so, so yeah. tell, tell us because, I was, oh, sorry, I Daddy. Wanted, I wanted to, you know, <laughs> tap into the, the reaction of your parents. Okay. How did they take the news that you were becoming no lorry? Because that would scare, if you understand tradition, yeah. some parents would be like, eh? Is a bigger title. Then, how did they receive the fact that you know polygamy was the option you chose? My mom was a bit worried at first, but also she's like, "We are balloon shift any year because we've been through quite a roller coaster mm -hmm. ride pertaining to the relationship and all that." So, okay. if you that see my mom initially, they never objected. Okay. Contrary to what they wrote online, oh, okay. mm. they never objected. Oh, fantastic! So, um, how do you? How is the routine like? And the reason why I'm asking is because people also people find polygamy so foreign, except for people like Nima. Mm. She has the fact. I'm not going to exempt you because she's, she's, because she's a monogamous religion. relationship. relationship. <laughs> you might have, <laughs> but people always they, they they always try to figure it out. Like, how do they manage six wives? Isn't that Monday is for you, Tuesday is for the next person? Please, like, <laughs> did you share it? Because when I was growing up, my father was a polygamist. So Monday through Thursday, he was in my house. Friday to Sunday, he was in my stepmother's house. So we knew there was, the routine was very clear. So how is it in your own end? Or is it that, is there a schedule? Is there a roster? Or time is it table. timetable? <laughs> and um, or how you, so whenever you see the king, you that, collect. That, that he shows. I don't think he's a collector. Day. I don't know consignment. <laughs> Whenever I don't you think see the king, there's a timetable. Right? Well, there's no timetable. So just manage our time according to. So whenever he shows up, he shows up. Yeah, that's it. Oh, so he chooses when to see anyone. I don't know yet. Oh, <laughs> I, aren't you afraid that that could cause something in future where probably he prefers one person to. The no, other? Do you care? If you're in a polygamous relationship, you don't care. No, I would prefer. care. See, if answer? it's supposed to be equal, let it be equal. Mm. That's what I'm asking. Okay, sorry. There's then a question. It's left for him to be able to manage that angle, mm. you know? Okay, Toby, if you had um, certain objections as to maybe you wanted time. And you know, he, because he's a king, number one, you know, time is not something he controls. Yeah. He can be in council, he can be, he yeah. can be busy. Mm -hmm. And then the other women understand that, but then you see that at this time he's not committed to even maybe emotionally seeing the women, but you're not feeling, you, don't have, you feel like you don't have enough of his time. How do you communicate it? Do you, are you, do you think you're in that kind of relationship where you can express it? Yeah, that's where communication comes in. I'm a very outspoken person. Clearly. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't be in a situation where I can talk to you mm -hmm. and tell you how I feel yeah. without mm -hmm. offending you. Of course. So, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. You know, one of the reasons why I really I love was you excited already. about this conversation is because mm -hmm. I, I was telling people that um, in Africa, we put a lot of things in secrecy. You know, mm -hmm. when Queen died recently, a lot of information about the royal family came out and, we, and people, the, the world was looking at, the, at them in admiration of what they did, the, the culture, the customs. And it's important that we get to know more about the own need, the lifestyle. You know, it helps us to have a better understanding so that we don't, we judge less and mm -hmm. we have a true understanding. So that's why we're throwing these few questions into you. So I, I want you to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about your future. I mean, you have a business you're running. Um, many, many, many polygamous homes say it's me and my children. How, how do, what, what are the next steps for you? Are you building a business or you're just waiting for whatever it is? that comes with your position as a queen? Okay. So first of all, I'm a fashion designer. I made this dress. You made it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Beautiful. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah. I'm also an artist. Nice. It makes media artists, so I paint as well. Oh, wow. So I'm just trying to flesh out my business. Fantastic. QTP Luxury. Yeah, made oh, this dress. Nice. The fairy artist as an artist. And I'm just trying to flesh out my business and also find a way to merge it with being a queen, you know, the responsibilities nice. that come with that. So with time, I would establish my business in a way that suits Who you yeah. being queen. Your role. And yeah. you can hold your own. Yeah. But I love that, you know, because the only reason in the past, people never knew 
had businesses. Oh, yeah. They had careers. If you read African history well, the Oloris had businesses and they were known for their strength. But, you know, they would downplay that their path. successes because of the role that they play. So, and modernity, people started thinking, just sit profile and sit pretty as an Olori. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I love the dress. Thank you very much. I, I think it's Thank just you know, how, how, spectacular. How it's it, just so you know, beautiful. Do you feel that he's a demigod or, you know, is this... You know, I always feel like when the honorary, when the when the honey comes in, yeah, he's the honey of it. Ike Josha. You know, they, yeah, yeah, Ike Josha. Second to the gods. Like, so how yeah, do you yeah, feel yeah, in yeah, his yeah, presence? Second is it like only to the gods. Yeah. Have you had to learn? Have you had to learn more the culture? You, and... She was telling us. Onki oba boy, onki oba to. Ojaja fi di ote jale. Omo ayi kiti ogun, omo eti ri ogun. Kare o leyo aje o kuni ota e so big ba. Right. That's so he holds that position because God made it possible. So he has a substance to his presence. So, yeah. All this praise now is doing me jiggy jiggy in my body. Jiggy How do you jiggy. get down to the real thing? Do you start with the praises or... You come hey, to see the <laughs> breakfast <laughs> show. I'm, 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 no, listen, please, 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 Do you start with the praises? Yeah. Toby, you know? don't answer. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 Allow her now. Or when it's that time, he becomes a human being and yeah. ascends to you. Becomes mortal. Mm. Yeah, hey. Becomes mortal. <laughs> I'm not going to be telling you that. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> tick, tick, oh, tick, wow. tick. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Interesting. <laughs> so, so, oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm just trying to picture yeah. the story, man. Okay, yeah. let's, 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 <laughs> let's talk about Let's talk about past time with the okay. king. You know, sometimes he, he, he leaves all this... Uh, you know, substance, the office, and it's just down. himself. How is your relationship? Does it chat? Does it play games? Funny. Is it funny? Does it what tickle kind of you? Person? Is it funny? Is it a nice guy? He's actually a funny person. You should have noticed from some of the videos on social mm -hmm. media, the way he talks mm -hmm. to people. He's friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Tell us some about the culture. I'd like us to learn from you. Okay. Uh, I see a lot of people wearing white around him. Okay. A lot of the, the wives have to wear white. Is that correct? Um, and the, are you allowed to wear other colors? I mean, I, I, some of us are confused. We just see them all wearing white. Is that the is that the uniform or is that the tradition that's supposed to be? Or you can wear any color in his presence. That's the tradition. But if you choose to wear other colors, mm -hmm. as long as it's not really black or red, then yeah, good. Okay, but coral bead is like red, so it depends on. You don't wear red. Normally, I don't even like red because yeah. no, it mean, washes my skin tone. I'm surprised right. that, you know, the Oloris uh, will stay away from red. No, no, no. They just said no, they, no, no. I'm just saying, like, you know, Yoruba people has a thing about red, red and, and black, black yeah. you know. So, but in his presence, presence you have to be white. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah. It just depends on what choice of color you like. But white is the color of the day, anytime, any yeah. day. So, yeah. like, yeah. Okay. So, how do you get along with other wives? Mm. Yes. How, how is the relationship? Are you guys friends? Them, yeah. You say, ah, mommy wa, or just <laughs> hey, <laughs> girls? Is there an elder? Yes. Yeah, of course. Just to come in. Yeah. You're the youngest. I'm the youngest. Okay, so how do you relate to the others? Ulori ma, you know? I don't know. I chose to put ma. Okay. Ordinarily, I don't disrespect people because I wasn't brought up that way. Yeah. So I met some of them, and we get along nicely. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. respectful to you. To, to be, help me. You know, I have this confusion because when the Oni ascended, it seemed like he was more Christian than he was traditional <laughs> for the title that he held, which was very traditional. And you see, each of the events that are traditional events, when he now comes out, when they do the oros, they release, sometimes they release the doves, and, you know, certain traditional rites, which have you witnessed that, you know, shocked you? Or do you just find them all easy to, you know, to be involved in? Do you have any, anything that you're scared of? No, I'm not scared of anything. <laughs> okay, so do you carry out any of them on his behalf or with him? Or I have you, just you? come in officially okay. in just about two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, okay. so. mm, that's so fresh. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be in your honeymoon? <laughs> <laughs> so I witnessed a few and... There's nothing to be scared of. Mm -hmm. Though, generally, 
as Nigerians, mm -hmm. we like to associate with Christianity mm -hmm. and being Muslim, mm -hmm. you know. But Asha Baba Baba Wa is the tradition. Yes. That's our how our great-grandfathers and all that, that's how mm -hmm. they communicate with God, you know, mm -hmm. through some deities and all that. And him being a traditional ruler, he cannot neglect that part. Mm -hmm. Him being a Christian as how he was brought up, you know, mm -hmm. from coming from a Christian background is on the side, but now he is a king and he has to so, honor, yeah, <laughs> custodian of culture, he has to honor the, uh, the ancestors and yeah. all the beliefs. All right, so let's talk about, let, let, me, let, me, let me pack that for a moment because I'm really interested in your choices as a young person. You're pretty young, and mm. um, a lot of young girls are looking at you and saying, okay, if another king stays, they would like to marry me, what are the things you had to contend with before making that decision? When you got that call from somebody who says, do you want to get married? You know, are you interested in meeting the Oni and all that? What are the things that came run through your head? I want, to, I want you to help explain because there's another girl out there now thinking of not just a king, but even a polygamous relationship. A married man, a second married man is saying, uh, has two wives, three wives saying, I want to marry. And he's serious and he wants, he's a polygamist. Um, what are the things you have to contend with? What, what are the, the good, the bad that you can help that person who's trying to make a decision on polygamy? Should they do it or should they not do it? On How, polygamy. Polygamy especially, yes. If you find that the person suits your some certain criteria that are non-negotiable for you, then you go with it. I mean, ordinarily, I never imagined that I would find myself in a polygamous setting. Okay. But I always had some non-negotiables. Like? <laughs> Just tell us. <laughs> we're learning from you. Tell us. I always had some non-negotiables, so, yeah. He has to have money? Mm. That's important. Hey, listen, don't be... No, it. of course, money is important. Right. But you can always make money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. it's... Okay. But... <laughs> I'm listening. Is he Fear kind? of God. Yeah, he's a yes. kind person. I wouldn't be with somebody who isn't okay. kind. Because my kind of person, I'm highly sensitive. Right. Okay. So if... <laughs> if you don't meet certain criteria, I would not be with you. That's the truth. Oh. I, would, I wish, okay, so if those criteria are private, I would definitely yeah, like to hear them. Like to They're keep private. Them private. Oh, that's fine. Don't worry. During the break, we'll ask you. Also, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I get it. Yeah, let okay. me go on a break. Let me, let, me, let me let you take a breather. When we come back, we'll move on to another segment of this question, and we'll let you relax on this a bit and come to other things. You're such a gorgeous woman. I, I think you are. And I, thank I mean, you, man. I'm really, I'm really happy that your beauty and brains, and I'm really yes. happy that. Um, at your in this set this morning. Let me go on a break. When we come back, we'll talk, to, talk about other things. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we've been speaking with Queen Toby. Um, and we're talking about your, your role as a queen, your role as how you started your career. But there's a final segment I'd like us to touch on, which is confidence building. And the reason why I say that is because you exude so much confidence, right? And there are lots of young people today that are beautiful, but because of circumstances around their lives, because of circumstances they grew up in, they don't see that beauty. And, they, they, and even if they're beautiful, they don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't believe that they're beautiful, number mm -hmm. one. Number two, those who even know they are beautiful, people already assume they are dumb. They don't respect them or give them the adequate respect for who they are. That's number two. Number three, some say, oh, because you're not married, no matter how fine you are, all your successes is nothing. So you are now, you're, you're, you're a beautiful woman. You've been a beautiful queen. Um, you're a queen now, and you've made some choices. I'd like you to... Let's talk about that. How do you help young people? How did you get to the point where you're so confident in yourself and able to find yourself to this point? Okay. So I've always been quite a confident kid because my father would tell me I'm beautiful, dress me up and all that. Oh, nice. And I would sit in front of the mirror for hours. As a matter of fact, they thought I was really vain for a child. <laughs> but, you know, the Christian background still keeps me grounded. Mm. So even though I am vain, I'm not, I wasn't wayward as so a you child. You're vain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so then at some point, mm. getting into uni, the pressure and all that, now with social media age, confidence is not something you really see in young people because the way social media kind of flushes off um, it, 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 it wipes 
off your confidence if you don't really know who you are right. or if you're not coming from a solid point. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what I would like to say to young people pertaining to that is you have to remind yourself of who you are every day. Mm -hmm. If you have to write it down, if you have to say it to yourself in front of the mirror, say, I am beautiful, I am confident. Say your normal prayers because God listens. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is you really want to be, mm -hmm. if it's for you to get... Um, more confident if it's for you to get richer, if it's mm. for you to work. Don't just say, I wish to be rich yeah, yeah, without course. working. But whatever it is you want to improve yourself mm. on, mm. you have to pray about it. You have to say to yourself, standing right. in front of the mirror, looking into your eyes, because you are who you say you are. Ah. Because even the Bible says there's power in the tongue. So you have to... Um, define how you want your life to go. If you see you're lacking in some aspects, right. take physical measures and mental measures to improve that aspect. Mm -hmm. And then for women, they can just always take care of their skin, your hair. Those are the basic things for women, for you to look confident. confident. Your hair, your skin. Note the kind of outfits that suits your personality or how you want people to perceive you then work on improving those things and see how everything about you just goes from zero to 100. Wow, mm. I like that. I love the last part. I seriously do because I think some people don't dress to suit their personalities. Oh. You see some, you're dressed but you're concerned about certain areas that you don't want to show. And when you can wear something that covers it, yeah. you just don't worry. Because I think yeah. when you don't have to worry, worry then. about that, your confidence yeah. will be boosted. Yeah. I, I would like you to talk about, you know, dating. Okay. You know, how would a young girl watching today follow your idea of dating and, you know, protect themselves? Because you just shared that you're from a grounded background because of the kind of upbringing which was Christian that you had. And you were still able to date, meet people and all of that. So, can you share, you know, what you'd advise? Okay, so pertaining to dating, <laughs> first, know what you want and recognize what you don't want. Don't yeah, so that's the only way you wouldn't just be roaming around and mm. going from... Mm. So, as a matter of fact, while I was dating, I had a book where I'd write lists of things I like. Like what? Now you've been asking me to talk about Okay, okay let's start with just basics. Okay, okay I liked height, you know. tall? Yeah. Okay. Because I'm tall and I don't want to be with somebody who is shorter okay. than I am because okay. I like wearing heels. Okay. So that was just like a non-negotiable for me. Okay. Then, being God-fearing, Good looking. God is not relative. God is very relative. God now. is relative depending on how you. Okay. And then somebody who doesn't uh, shut you up, somebody who helps you, makes, makes you feel better. Right. You know, there are some people where, there are some people that when you step up with them, mm. you feel uh, like, less, yeah, less I'm not really supposed to be with this person. Mm. Because, you know, you know, yeah, you, you feel better with them indoor than being outdoor. outdoor. If you find yourself with such person, then maybe you should try to leave that relationship. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it will wear you off your confidence. Like mm -hmm. you would, it will wash off your confidence because <sighs> you won't be happy to show mm -hmm. that side of your life. Mm -hmm. And of what you, is you spending time in a relationship mm -hmm. you're not happy to that you're not happy to be in. Mm -hmm. um, so, most young girls you see now would say um, if he doesn't have a house, he doesn't have money, he doesn't have cars, he doesn't have businesses, I won't get involved. Okay. Um, that was way different from what we had growing up. So at the time, you have to just make sure that he has potentials and then both of you will work together to, you know, create something. But now nobody's waiting for potentials. In fact, he has to have certain things physically before you can get in. Do you think uh, that is putting a lot of men under pressure? Yes, right it is actually. But to each his own. It's simply because life, times have changed. You've been in a relationship with somebody and the person tells you that you're my one and only. <laughs> when he leaves you, he's yes. telling five others or three, oh. seven people that that's for normal relationship now. Is telling them you're my one and only. Mm. So because young people already found out that um, this is how it is. It's like most people are just playing games. So if you're going to be spending your time with somebody in a relationship, yeah, they want something to compensate 
them. Mm. So that at the end of the day, even if you walk away, at least I got something, right? You're Don't smiling. Mm. I got you. Let me go on a very short break. When I come back, final life of this conversation, stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have our guests with us, and we're going to be wrapping up very soon. But there's a, there's a question that has been on my mind. So if the owner of Ife decides to marry more wives, would you be okay with it? Okay, if that's what he wants. Right, and you don't, it won't bother you. Okay, let me ask you. you let me answer the question now. <laughs> Would it bother you? Um, maybe to some extent, but mm. if because we're humans, right? Right, right? But naturally, if you know who you are, mm. you won't be so bothered by being in a group, kind of. You get my point. Right. So like. You know that, okay. And also, if you have your personality outside being somebody's wife. Right, absolutely. You won't feel too offended. And knowing that this um, relationship or being in this marriage, mm -hmm. he's a traditionalist. Right. He has a right to want to have many oh, women right. if yeah. he chooses to. So we already it. know that, so right. I don't think it should bother... <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Right. Someone is asking on Twitter on Naibu, Ademola Alala, they says, I should ask Queen Toby that as Olori to the only, what is your plan for your immediate community and how will you use your position to influence girls and women in the society? Okay. First, because I'm a fashion designer and I'm beauty conscious, I would, once I flesh out my business, I'd set up an academy where people can learn fashion, you know. Apart from going to school these days, you have to learn skills. a skill. So that's something I'm willing to contribute to the community. Mm, and right. we're working on it. So. As like a pet project you're going to have? Or? Yeah. Right. As time goes by. So I was going to ask before Mo, Mo caught me, because she thought I was cutting you. <laughs> there are certain dramas that we've seen online. Mm -hmm. We've seen where women are on course, they, you know, in the pain, recently now, Osho drama is happening with the son of the governor and his wife, who recently decided to separate from him, calling out everything. How would you react to you know, women who, yes, maybe marriage didn't work or relationship has failed, but when they're leaving, they want to break the table and shatter the roof? I'm not judging anyone, mm -hmm. but I feel like this generation is just like that. <laughs> but there are still some people that are not going to scatter the whole place because something didn't work out. You take it in strides. Mm -hmm. There was a time where I was with Kabezi and the thing didn't work out. I just got myself together and tried to focus on me. I mean, if you're able to establish your persona outside your relationship, then you won't feel like dragging the whole house down when everything is not going well. I think that's something the youth needs to learn, that end of relationship doesn't mean the end of the world. And there are times where some friendships or relationships, they're not meant to last a lifetime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are just life-giving relationship for a certain period of time, not a lifetime kind of mm -hmm. friendship. Right. Yeah. So let me let you want to jump in here. Yes, so um, what would you tell a young woman who sees you, admires you, and wants to be like you, wants to be able to maybe land a king someday? What would you, how would you prepare them? First, work on improving yourself on all fronts. Physical appearance, that's just a little. Mm. Your skills... Your personality, when you're undeniably good, you're good. Mm. There were interferences and they would say, no, Koyeko, but <laughs> something about your grace will mm. speak for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you hold on to God too. Right. I don't go to church every day. Right. You know, I'm saying this because I've already said something about God, yeah. you know. But when you, you know. pray mm. and you communicate with God, Grace will speak for you at every point in time. Quickly, ah, in addition okay. to that, um, you are traditionalists yeah. by marriage yeah. right now. How do you combine traditional rights? I'm, I'm sure you're supposed to have some from time to time yeah. with the Christian God. Well, it's all in the purity of the heart. Christianity puts 
a label to it that this is the way they want you to practice the religion. And now, me being married to a traditionalist does not stop me from praying to God my own way. And still, I can still do the traditional activities as long as you're doing whatever it is with a pure heart, right, right. without malicious intentions, yeah. then how I see it right. is that you're still communicating with the same I, God. I have two questions because we have to wrap up soon. I have two important questions for you. You married a man who's had a lot of baggage. Okay. I say baggage, first wife, second wife, the whole drama. How would you ensure that you don't become a baggage or some, point, some kind of story? You know, what, what, how, how are you confident that you also not be one of those, ah, she left, oh, this thing happened, oh, something happened, oh, that's one. Secondly, cooking. You cook, and you cook for him, and if you cook for him, <laughs> what does he like to eat the most? Ah. <laughs> okay. Olu alon fifuni, God gives. So, if you say, how would you ensure that you wouldn't leave, blah, 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 it all depends on your determination in life or what you hold dear. Let me rephrase that, Queen. There's a word to be serious. What's that thing we use? That phrase we use? That thing that you're limited marriage. That thing. Your um, boundaries. Red flags. Your, your red flag or your. That, that's, that's the phrase you okay, use. Okay. What's that thing that you, he does? And you're like, you know what? That's it. A deal breaker. A deal breaker. Oh, my, like your deal breaker. Deal breaker. <laughs> my, normally, my own deal breaker would be don't ever lay your hands on me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, if right. that happens, it's over. That's it. okay. And he's not that kind of person. Okay. So, okay. like, and also, if you have a relationship where you can communicate, these are the things I like, these are the things I know, and you respect each other. Mm. Okay. You guys will not get to the point where you're clashing because when something is happening, you can easily call your husband mm. and say, I don't like this. Husband can easily call wife and say, right. I don't like this. Fantastic. We have just 30 seconds. Food that your husband likes to eat. <laughs> do you cook at all? It's just the you cook. cook I cook. For him or just for yourself? <laughs> I cook for myself. I'm but a fantastic cook. cook, but he has a chef. He has a chef. Okay, yeah. So you don't cook for him? Mm, no. Oh. You should. Okay, mm, well, well you yeah, have tasted your food before. Yeah, of course. Of course.